Um, in terms of funding, um, it's kind of it's, it's interesting. I am curious about the children that you work with that are um, too dependent. Yeah. Do have, maintaining like a, for a medical system to maintain that is very expensive. Mm -hmm. um, and in, I know in the U.S. One of the only situations when an insurance company will pay for services is for feeding services to transition them off of the tube because it's financially more viable yeah. um, because it's just so expensive to maintain. Have you ever been able to provide rationales to get um, support from Trying. Like the medical side of it rather than, because I find it curious that it would go through autism funding. I mean, I can see well, that's... the diagnosis, but and that might be the only way, but... It seems like the medical side would have an interest, a financial interest in, in providing those kinds of services. Yeah, and that's just funding. that's just beginning. Uh, like yeah, we're just starting. Um, our team is starting to collaborate with the the complex feeding team at Children's, and the hope is that we present a few cases for where we can say, look, this is how much it costs for us to work with the child versus this is how much it cost if the child continued to be on the tube and um, saw, you know, was monitored. And um, um, so that's just beginning. Yeah, that's great because yeah. I know that um, it's such an expensive endeavor. Um, and so it it's, would be great to have an additional source of funding to be able to provide support. Yeah, and that's the most compelling with a child on a tube. So yes. that's why we're trying mm -hmm. to find. We had a child that we thought was perfect for our first case study, but uh, he just started eating. But he wasn't on a tube, so um, he was just eating pureed foods. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the the kids that I have seen have used their autism funding, yeah. and I, it just says which is makes the months livid. But anyway, sorry, go on. Right. Yeah. Yes. Um, in terms of providing a rationale, I agree that the two one is, is because I think that the financial implications are more immediate. Mm -hmm. But then when you look at the long term health outcomes of the beige diet, I mean, not just yeah. because of developmental disabilities, mm -hmm. but in general. I mean, it would certainly, for those kids who are selected based on textures that has dental implications, um, like the variety of foods that they eat, that, but it's so long-term and um, affected by so many factors that you can't really pinpoint no, it's not as... later health outcomes or as a result of eating, eating brown foods for their whole life, but it probably has a major impact. Yeah. It's too bad that those rationales couldn't be... I know. Um, given as well because I can see the rationale long term. Long term, yeah. 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 I think the hope, it's beginning. I think the hope is that you know, this is there isn't a good there isn't a pro provincial feeding service aside from assessment. I think the hope is that as success cases accumulate through Lauren and her group and and perhaps others that that kind of compelling case can start to be to be built to secure the funding because, you know, I think, mm -hmm. I mean, for the autism, the kids who get autism funding, I mean, it's fine, they have the money, but the money they spend dealing with feeding is less money that they can spend on other kinds yeah. of early intensive yeah, early they, intervention, which isn't okay. No, it's not okay. Because they need both, right? Um, yeah, and, and it's a kids, help. Kids, with, kids who don't happen to be lucky enough to have autism, yeah. um, you know, there's no mechanism for families to be able to to do this, and it's it's clearly like, you know, sort of breathtakingly intensive work that that needs to be done. To I mean, but within a matter of a week, yeah. a kid's eating orally, unbelievable. Yeah. But I mean, it's an intense it's an yeah. intense week. Yeah. It's a it's an effortful. It's very effortful. Right. Yeah, right. but and, it, you know the sort of I think the sort of. Um, you know, well, we'll let him play with the food for six months and maybe he'll eventually put it in his mouth approach that, you know, I, I think people do that because they don't have the resources to be able to, to do this level of effortful, intensive intervention. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I was just going to say, I think that's it. It's, it's not, I'm a Kate Chase, I'm a speech pathologist. So, um, oh, hi. Hi. Um, I think it's, this is great because, you know, we need this kind of data collection to show that, you know, there are, for especially for younger kids, there are technically supports here. You know, they're mm -hmm. supposed to go to the, you know, if it's an early case and they come out of Sunny Hill, they're supposed to go to the Center for Ability and get OT, SLP yeah. support. But those, even though it's, what you guys are doing is technically not very different from what would be recommended, there is no intensity. 
No, there's no intensity. Right. Not that this is dramatically different. Um, no. It's happening, you know, you're right there, you're, you're able to support it, you're able to do for the parents what, you know, other professionals are, are asking parents to do, but all of us who are parents know we like, can't do it. Yeah, an OT once said to me, your monitoring is my initial work with kids. So that's exactly. how intensive I get to be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I, yeah, I think it's great. And I think that there's a huge amount of potential mm -hmm. the data that you're collecting to be able to show that mm -hmm. it is a real We're hoping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you, you pay now or you pay later for these oh, exactly. things. And the old, the bigger and tougher, I mean, who wants to do that with a 15-year-old? I know. You know, a 200 pound kid named Duke. I mean, you just can't, right? You just can't. Right? No, it's, it's so hard. I, yeah, the, the feeding team phoned me yesterday and said, we have a 15-year-old, will you work with him? It's like, I don't know, I don't know. Oh, but yeah. <laughs> yeah but I said, like, come on. <laughs> we, I did say yes, give me, the, yeah, have her call me, but. Yeah. yeah. But we all take a deep breath and go, okay, we'll just be happy if he's eating six foods mm -hmm. as opposed to 30. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, have yeah. a, I have another question that's more related to your approach. And mm -hmm. One of the things I'm wondering, I think it's great. Um, one of the things I'm wondering in our intervention, we sometimes do this. Um, we're not as good with our feeding about data as we are with our playing about data. <laughs> um, but I wonder, so much of the games that we see are based on the trust and the kids having a relationship with us. Absolutely. How do you find, do you have time before you start your yeah. first day in yeah. building that relationship first? Yeah, we do. Yeah, a bunch of pairing. Christine brings her toys and does a lot of play. Yeah. But those first initial days, especially with kids that have had no experience with any food or um, uh, orally, uh, those initial days, there's not any food. It's all empty spoons, empty neck brushes, and it's all about developing that trust. Open your mouth for me, and then good things will happen. Yeah, and uh, and with some kids, I mean, we worked with a seven-year-old that couldn't chew, and it took a long time before he realized Christine's here to help. So when she puts her fingers in your mouth, it means it's going to make it easier for you. Don't, Don't bite them. Don't bite them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think there is some data for really young creams on, you know, gentle oral stimulation. Oh, is there? I should read it. Because we do it, but it that'd be good. I think it's Wolf, but um, oh, okay. uh, I don't think that, I agree with you, I don't think there is for the preschool age kids, but I know there is. I went ahead of him, so I went back. And oh, back. okay. <laughs> yeah. If anything, it's sort of like a warm-up activity. They like yeah. the experience, yeah. Please help me thank Lauren for a great session. Thank you.